Welcome back to Ways Learning and what are we doing today? Well, today we're learning about fly fishing and I'm gonna do two videos. I'm gonna do one on how to set up your fly actual line with your leader and the three knots you need for your Lord of the Ring fans. There's three knots to rule them all. Three simple knots you need to learn. And once you learn those, you're ready to string up your pole, uh, your fly fishing rod, tie a fly on and actually go fish. The second video I'm gonna do is on how to false cast where you see the beautiful um, arcing lines that are up in the air. I'm gonna teach you how to do that. It's pretty simple. You can learn that in about 15 minutes and then you are ready to cast and you're ready to fish. Now, most people don't take the time to learn their knots and they get frustrated because they get down on the water and then they have a problem or their line gets tangled up and they've got to, re they've got to put a new one on there and they don't know how to do it. So learn your knots, practice them. I'm gonna show you the easiest way to practice them is sit at the table with bigger um, actual uh, paracord and practice them over and over again so you understand how the knots work. And then once you understand how the knots work, then you can practice with the smaller monofilament. Now, one thing that's confusing about fly fishing, and that's one thing is fly fishing can be as complex as you want it to be. You can learn, you can learn how to tie flies, you can learn all the names, you can learn all the insects you're supposed to be imitating with the fly or the lure. But at the end of the day, you could also just say, I'm gonna get four flies, I don't care what they're called, I'm gonna cast them, and I'm gonna see if I catch anything. And then I'm gonna have people tell me which fly to use, and I'm gonna use that. So you can keep it pretty simple. On tying, same thing. And one other thing that's confusing about fly fishing, I'm gonna give you a quick little tip here that's gonna help you, is there's numbers for everything. There's 6X for tippet, there's 6X for, for your monofilament, there's different numbers for your, your weighted fly line, there's different numbers for your rod. There's different numbers for your flies. So here's a simple way to, to keep it, to understand it. So this is your fly line. This is the waxy coated part that adds weight so that you can actually propel a weightless lure through the air. This is your fly line and it attaches to your leader, which is monofilament. And it's usually eight or nine feet of monofilament. Um, so the fish can't see it. You can, they, they can see this. They can't see this. So right here is the first knot you're gonna learn, and it is the nail knot or the tube knot, and it connects your monofilament, your leader, to your fly line. Everything on the rod side of that knot, as the number gets bigger, the size gets bigger. So a six weight line or a six weight rod is bigger, thicker, heavier than a five weight or a four weight. So as the number gets bigger on this side, the diameter of size gets bigger. The opposite is on this side. As the number gets bigger, it gets smaller. So a seven X is smaller than a six X. A five X is bigger than a nine X. So as the number goes up, the size goes down on this side. He's probably a 16. So a 10 and a 16, as the number gets bigger, the size gets smaller on this side of the knot. And if you can remember that, it kind of keeps things in perspective and you can kind of learn it. Because it took me a long time and then I came up with that and I'm like, why didn't anybody tell me that before? I don't know, but anyway. So that's, that's my tip for you. All right, special shout out to our graphic design department here. Crump this stellar illustration to show you how it, all the knots you need to learn in, a, in an easier fashion. So no copyright infringements here, but this is your rod going here. This is your reel. And then this is your thicker line, your fly line. And if you look at it, this thick part right here, this waxy coating, that's your fly line, and then you attach it to monofilament, which is really similar to a uh, normal fishing line. And then as it goes down towards the nine foot section, it gets, as you quickly see, it gets thinner, almost hair-like as it gets to the end. So that way the weir wary trout will not see it. Okay, so there's three knots, three knots to rule them all that you gotta tie 
The one that attaches the fly line to the monofilament, the leader, is called a nail knot or a tube knot. Okay, you're only gonna tie that a couple times a year. Because every time you need a new leader, you're gonna need to tie one. If you get it in a big, uh, cat, uh, big ball of yarn, you're probably gonna need to tie it more often. Now, I will tell you, they have kind of came out with this, where every leader has always had a loop in it. So the monofilament will come with a loop in it when you get it like this in the packet. It'll have a, a actually a little loop at the end of the, the thicker part. So you, you can add here to your, to your fly line, you can add either with like a flame to uh, shrink wrap this to your, to your fly line um, or glue it, but you can glue a loop here and then you simply slide this loop into that one take the end of your leader and run it back through this so that it basically attaches uh, this loop to this loop and you're ready to go. The only thing you'd have to do is tie the end of the leader to your fly and you are ready to fish. I don't like it. Now my brother doesn't have any issues with it. I don't think it lays out on the water. If you get any kind of ripple, I don't think it lays out as well. He, he's gone to this and he says, he hasn't had any issues. So I should still tie the nail knot or the tube knot up here. Um, so then once you tie that, you're ready to fish. Now what will happen is as you start to change flies and cut it back, this gets shorter. So instead of this being two feet, this now is, let's say, a foot. Well, it's not going to look right and it's going to start getting thicker as you go up the leader. So what you do is you tie on tippet, which is the last two feet of your line and that's when the double surging comes in so when you first get it you're just tying two knots but then once you start trimming it back to add tippet which looks like this it just comes in a little a little roll it's it's very thin it's almost frog hair like there's actually one called frog hair and so you're going to have to tie a double surgeon to attach two feet of this to the line and then you'll tie that tippet um, after you tie the double surgeon, after you tie that tip, you'll tie that into your tippet to back to your fly and keep fishing. And then as you trim it back, you add more tippet. So you won't really replace your leader that often, but you'll replace your tippet quite a bit. So you're going to need to know how to tie the double or um, some people call it the triple surgeon because they do three loops. I only do two and it served me well, but some people do the triple. So um, anyway, we're going to get, get at it. I'm going to go in reverse order. The last knot you're going to tie is the fisherman knot or any knot to the hook. There's the improved clinch, there's the clinch, there's the orvis, there's the polymer. There's probably thousands of different knots people tie to the end of their um, leader or monofilament to a hook. Anyone you know or if you've learned over the years will work. Some are what's called 100% knots where um, the line will break before the knot breaks. And so um, if that matters to you, then make sure you get one that's 100% so you don't lose a fish because of your knot. If you get a little squiggly at the end where it's just, you get one of these where it looks like this and the line's still intact and the hook's gone, then it's probably the knot wasn't uh, cinched up or tied tight. So that's it, we're gonna get at it. We're gonna tie this one first I'm going to show you the improved clinch because I think it's the one most people are familiar with. And then we'll work our way back up the leader finally to the nail knot. So that way you don't have to watch the video if you're going to go with the loop system. So um, stay tuned. We'll go through them. All right. So the first knot you're going to tie is the fisherman's knot of the improved clinch. And so this represents your, your hook. And I had to redo the video because something didn't turn out in the other one. So I'm going to splice them together. But so this, this black line is your tippet or the end of your leader and it goes through the eye of the hook, comes back, you're simply gonna grab that tag with your leader and you're gonna spin this five, six times. Now what you'll see is this just created a loop here. I'm gonna take my tag and I'm gonna come through the loop. Boom. Now. As I go through that loop, I've created another loop right here. And <clears throat> so I'm simply gonna come back through that original loop and through 
that loop and then I'm going to pull it tight this way. Now it's not going to work as well with the with the um, paracord because the paracord kind of grips on itself. But then once I pull it this way and get it tight with the tag, okay, I'm going to let go of the tag. I'm going to wet this knot and then I'm going to pull it. And I'm going to have to kind of coax it along here because it's it's wanting to it's wanting to grip but in a on a on a regular raw on a regular monofilament it'll slide really easy and then boom i simply pull that tight to the eye of your hook and then that's done and then i come and cut this little tag off here and i'm ready to fish and that's basically it that's the improved clinch some people call it the fisherman's knot but it's more just called the improved clinch and that's it you're ready to fish The second knot that we're going to cover today is called your double surgeon. And so let's pretend that this is your leader, your fly is down here, and you've got to add tippet to it. Okay, so the surgeon is fairly simple. So this is your tippet, you've got two feet of it. You're gonna lay these, you're gonna lay these two lines, probably 10 inches, two inches, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you're gonna waste tip it, but it, for the most part, it doesn't matter. You take these two together, and then you're simply gonna create a loop. If they stay together, you're gonna to create a loop. So now you have a loop of your Tip it in the black and your leader in the blue, okay? And then all you're gonna do is take these two tabs and you're gonna go through, like I said, two. You're gonna go through the circle and pull them both through. You're gonna go through again and pull them both through. That fell out. Okay, that's the double surge and the triple, you just go through one more time. And then you simply, you're gonna wet that with saliva and then you're slowly going to pull the excess on the tippet, holding the leader. And on the other side, you're gonna hold the excess with the leader with your tippet and you're simply gonna pull that knot tight. And then you would cut off your excess of your tippet, and you would cut off with a little pair of uh, fingernail clippers, a, call, they call it a clipper, or you could use scissors to cut off that tag there. And so then you're simply left with the knot holding them two together. And then when you need to do it again, you do it again. So let's tie that one more time. Okay, so we've gone over the fisherman knot or the improved clinch. We've gone over the double surgeon to attach your tippet to your fly line. And then, like I said, the hardest one to learn that you don't have to tie that often is the nail knot or the tube knot. Now they make this on this pair of clippers here. They make a, so just a standard clippers and it's got this, uh, it's got a little thing. It's got a um, little um, nail here to clean out your hook if you've got glue in the top of your eye of your hook. But then it also has this tiny little slides, slides off. And what it's designed to do is you wrap your monofilament around this to create the nail knot or the tube knot. And then you slide your fly line through there, slide all this these loops you've created here off and then cinch it down to your fly line so it's just a little later and then you pull it all back through um, when you're done you can actually do it by hand you don't need one of these but it just does make it incredibly handy so anyway we are going to tie the nail knot and i'll show you how to do it all right so we're going to tie the this is representing the fly line the big waxy um the big waxy fly line, and then this represents the monofilament or the leader. And I'm gonna show you how to tie it to it. Now this tube knot or nail knot, 
gets people every time. And so I'm gonna give you an illustration. If you'll keep this in mind, this is how it helps me remember. You're gonna double back and just get a lot of it. I mean, if you waste a little bit of the leader, it's nine feet for crying out loud, a couple, three or four inches to make it easier that you only tie three or four times a year, add more tippet to the end of it next time when you when you retie your um, fly and you'll have a, just the same amount of length. But to me, giving up the length for ease isn't that much. So you make a loop and you basically set that on your fly line. Now, the thing you wanna think about is you're basically doing a constrictor knot. It's constricting this monofilament to your fly line. So think of a boa constrictor and this fly line as your arm. So it's simply going to wrap itself around your arm, okay? Fly line to your arm, it's gonna make these loops. Now, as you're making the loops, you wanna hold those loops together because you're gonna to have to go through them. So you just keep, you're gonna make like four or five loops with the boa constrictor loosely around your arm. Your arm is basically the same thing as that little tube or loop that's on that little tool. Now, the bow constrictor, he's wrapped around your arm. He's got four, four loops around your arm. Now, his head goes back through all those loops he's made around your arm back towards the rod. And as it does, now you're simply gonna keep those loops together as you slowly pull on the snake's head and the snake's tail. And you just keep tightening, 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 slowly, slowly. You can wanna wet this, okay? You can keep it, you can keep it. If they cross, it's not that big a deal. If they don't, it's better if they don't cross because it looks better, but like I said, it doesn't matter. It, it's going to, either way, it's going to hold. That's, and that's all you care about. And so also a little trick here, once you kind of get it to where it, it's not quite tight, but it's pretty tight, you can slowly slide your arm closer to your hand. So you have less tab, so you have less tab to cut out, but that's not as important. So you're going to grab the tail of the snake and you're going to grab the head of the snake and you're gonna, just going to keep slowly working that knot until that constrictor knot is tight and you get that baby really tight on there. Boom. Now you're gonna cut this tag off from your leader and you're gonna cut this tag off from your fly line. Now, one little caveat, as you cut your fly line off with your nippers or your scissors, it is hollow. So water will actually seep up in there and it'll keep creeping all the way up here. And then once you get water up here, when you, when you're, instead of your fly line and leader laying nicely on the water, it's going to start to go under and then the water is going to push and it's going to drag you down. And it's going to drive you crazy. So make sure you cover the end of that hollow fly line um, with your either fly tying glue, or I just use, I just carry a little thing of um, super glue in my fly tying kit. So if I ever have to tie a new leader, if I ever have to cut off, um, my fly line, then I put a little dab on the end of it. Wait a minute, it's dry. Now I can go go fish. You can also, I mean, you always want to do that, but if you're if you're if it's dipping down, you can also take uh, wax that you put on a dry fly and what's called greasing your leader. So you you get it in your hands and you rub it here um, about 12 inches on your fly line and your leader and your, your fly line and your leader will lay nice on the water. So just another tip. But those are the three knots you need how to learn. Tie them, learn how to tie them at home with bigger cord and then practice tying them and they'll make your life a lot happier. Once you learn them and you get little visuals in your head of how you're gonna tie them, then uh, when you're on the water, it makes it a lot more enjoyable. Um, like I said, like and subscribe. We're gonna put out another video on casting and then you should be ready to fly fish.